Thomas Nast Cartoon Award, and we need some brightness here, is awarded to Signe Wilkinson of the da of Philadelphia Daily News. This is the fourth time that Signe has won an OPC award, and tonight she's prepared a short presentation. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of beleaguered cartoonists everywhere, I'd like to thank OPC for honoring our little craft, particularly because many American newspapers have made themselves safe from a Charlie Hebdo attack by cleverly getting rid of their cartoonists. <laughs> We're down from 150, maybe 35 years ago, to today's 40 or so full-time positions, plus a bunch of freelancers who can't afford the entrance fee for this contest. <laughs> so the best thing journalism could do for OPC is to hire more cartoonists and run our cartoons. <laughs> Where is Dean Baquet, anyway? Oh. <laughs> While I thank uh, OPC for this award, I'm afraid they've made a terrible mistake. In the past few weeks, emotionally intelligent people, often in New York City zip codes, have said that cartoons should not punch down. Regrettably, your judges neglected to notice that many of my cartoons punch down. Take this reprehensible example of my work. If only we could wipe Israel off the map, our problems would be solved. <laughs> readers <laughs> readers ha um, who sympathize with the Palestinian cause, however, said, that they are the victims. Of course, when I've done cartoons about settlements and Gaza, Israeli sympathizers say they are victims. Even with nuclear weapons, they're victims. <laughs> then there's this one. No gays, no women, no birth control. Is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> My readers say that making fun of people of faith, especially people of their own faith, is always punching down. <laughs> but I hear you thinking, hey, she didn't draw a holy prophet. Well, earlier this month, I drew this. Wait, this isn't a gay wedding, is it? <laughs> Friends, stop applauding. This is not funny. <laughs> Many of my readers bitterly complained that Jesus has no place in an editorial cartoon. And my Jewish readers bitterly pointed out that I should have had unleavened bread. <laughs> You can't please anyone in a cartoon. But what about drawing Mohammed? I have. And your utterly clueless judges honored it in the 2006 awards. The big fat book of offensive religious cartoons, Mohammed third from the right. This cartoon has gone around the world many times with no complaints, which proves that it isn't showing a picture of Mohammed, but how you picture him. If he's laughing and happy, it's okay. <laughs> My response to all religions is that if you don't want your prophet to appear in a nasty cartoon, don't do nasty things in the name of your prophet.
Lastly, I'd like to say, especially in front of all you colleagues I'm in awe of and who get the stories that make it possible for a cartoonist to sit at home drinking coffee and do their job, <laughs> that I am really well aware of my privilege, really privileged position, cartooning in America under the protection of the First Amendment. So I will let a foreign cartoonist close for me. In 2011, opposition Syrian cartoonist Ali Farzat was abducted by armed critics of his work who beat him and stomped his hands until they were broken. His first cartoon after that ordeal captures the spirit, spirit of great cartoonists everywhere. <laughs> You applaud, but would you run it in your newspapers? <laughs> and I leave you with the now controversial words of Charlie Hebdo. Love stronger than hate. Thank you.